Bonjour everyone, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be touching on Control Glaive. We are going to be hitting guys with some heavy duty copium. But first we actually have just the utensil for this. Now we're ready to talk about Glaive Year. As always, if you guys enjoy the content, be sure to sub to the channel. I post daily to this channel. If you like the video, make sure to like it. And let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have tried Control, if you guys are staying on Pinnacle. I would love to know from you guys and what you guys think about Glavier in general so far. Also, be sure to check me out on Twitch. I stream Monday to Friday starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys enjoy the content here, you will most definitely like it over there. If you're watching this right now, I'm already live on Twitch. So be sure to click the link in the description box down below. And lastly... We're going to be hosting a $100 Steam gift card giveaway when my channel hits 15k subscribers on YouTube. The giveaway will be happening live on my Twitch, so be sure to hit that sub button. Now let's just jump into the video. The first thing I want to touch on here is the stigma around control. I think that in NA and EU, there's like this like massive stigma around playing control uh, because of the fact that every single guide from Korea said to play Pinnacle and not to play control because Pinnacle is way better and blah, blah, blah. But most Glaviers haven't actually played both specs because of the massive investment required to actually do that. To be honest, after playing both, they're about the same. <laughs> We're going to go deeper into how I feel about the spec and how I feel about Pinnacle versus, uh, Pinnacle versus uh, Control and all that stuff later on. But the reality is that both specs feel fantastic to play. This is a very good feeling class. And I would highly recommend to everyone to eventually try Control. But we, before we go into my actual thoughts of the class, I want to go into the massive levels of Copium as to why I picked Control. And there's actually two reasons why I switched. The first reason uh, behind why I decided to switch was the cost. I believe in Relic tier, the cost of control is gonna be way lower. But even right now, control is extremely cheap. The entire swap from Pinnacle to Control, including getting full Control Legendary books, including the Fion cost on my jewelry because I bought Fions, including the cost of the raw jewelry itself, was about 25 to 30K. That is is nothing <laughs> for how much stuff I bought to actually switch because the only real cost was my actual Fion cost and the actual control legendary books themselves. I personally think the legendary books themselves are very, very important because right now in Argos and Oreha hard mode, we actually get guaranteed class engravings on all of our jewelry. It means that class engraving jewelry could be very cheap because it's very easy to get. However, in Vaulton, I do not think this will be the case. Even though that change for Argos and Oreja was specific to NA, I don't think they'll repeat it again for Vaulton because it'll make it very hard to actually put together a five level three engraving setup if they decide to go down that route, which means that having a legendary class engraving slotted onto your character will have a lot of value. And because every single YouTuber has said to not play control, control books are disgustingly cheap. They are like a third of the price of pinnacle books. Now, they are a little bit higher than when I bought them because I bought them at like 900 to 1,000 gold. But these are still very, very cheap when you compare this to Pinnacle books, which are literally triple the price. <laughs> and this is kind of what got me starting to think about switching to Control. I figured, let's say Pinnacle is better, right? Let's say Pinnacle does way more damage than Control does. If I'm able to put together a set on my Control Glavier for cheaper then it doesn't matter if Pinnacle is stronger because being able to put together more engravings with better stats will always trump the fact that maybe Pinnacle does do more damage, right? Because I could literally just gear check other Pinnacle Glaviers because I will be stronger gear-wise. Another thing to remember is Control has a, I guess, wider variety of engravings that function with her than Pinnacle does. Pinnacle is really kind of pigeonholed into certain engravings because there's not a ton of things that synergize with Pinnacle. A good example of this is something like Raid Captain. Raid Captain is very, very strong for this class and it's also very cheap in Legendary. Getting 20 of these books, again, it will be 40K, but running two Legendary engravings on your sheet is very, very powerful and is gonna make putting together your set very, very cheap in Relic tier. And having Raid Captain is good for alts on your account, right? If you play a Shadow Hunter alt, that's very, very strong. If you play a Berserker alt, this is also very beneficial. It will benefit your account as well, depending obviously on the classes that you play. 
I think the fact that this class has a wider range of engravings that benefit her, and also she's going after engravings that might not be as popular, and also on stats on her jewelry that is not as popular amongst other classes, because you're not going after spec or crit, you're, you are trying to stack swiftness, which realistically only some martial artists are going for. I think that's going to end up benefiting her a ton in Relic tier. Again, this is all hypothetical, it might just end up being where it's just super expensive for everybody, and all this backfire blows up in my face, but that was my logic around the cost argument. The second argument for it is the fact that it is just easier to play. The Control Glavier is just more consistent than Pinnacle. Because of the fact that you're not stand swapping, it is just about high damage uptime. Now, obviously, I know that every single person watching this and every single Glavier on the planet that plays Pinnacle is a phase gamer. They never miss any abilities. They mastered every single mechanic that's in the game. They are working at Smilegate and have seen future boss fights and are already min-maxing their Pinnacle damage. But the reality is that for us simpletons, uh, it is very normal that you're going to mess up damage. On some of an, on an easier boss, let's say like if you're doing Yoho, Narsena, whatever, Alberhastic, whatever the hell else that we have right now, you're probably going to pump pretty hard in Pinnacle. But let's say once we get to Vulcan, let's say we get to Vicus, to Brawshaza, hell, even Argos, you could mess up your rotation. Beyond just the accidental just missing your Red Dragon Horn or missing a Starfall Pounce or whatever, it's possible that the boss just phases into mechanics. The boss just becomes untargetable for some reason, right? And you just stance swapped. If you have to go through either your red or blue stance without your stance buffs, you are losing out on a ton of damage. And it is very common that stuff like that can happen because bosses move a ton. Bosses have a ton of mechanics. And it's very common that bosses will have moments where they are just undamageable or you're doing something else where you cannot focus on doing damage at that time. So this was my logic around it. With harder content coming to the game, like Vault and Normal, Vault and Hard, Vicus is going to be around the corner, right? Learning new fights in the spec where I'm able to just consistently put out damage, where I'm not going to get messed up because I, oh, I just stance swapped and the boss moved or whatever else. It's just about high damage uptime. It's optimizing how much you can sit on the boss and just pump them with numbers. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I probably will end up doing more damage when learning a fresh boss fight that I will only be able to do once a week while playing the spec that doesn't have a bunch of things contributing to uh, my actual overall damage, right? Where it's just about, okay, stand behind the boss, sit on top of the boss, do the basic mechanics, and I don't have to worry about timing. Okay, should I hold my stand swap right now because I know the boss is about to become untargetable or do a mechanics check or whatever the hell else is going on? It's just about pumping as much damage as possible when I can. And when I can't, it's all good. I don't get hurt by that. These two factors is what really pushed me to switch to control. I figured early on, putting it together is going to be very, very cheap. And if that ends up being true, then I will end up pumping a lot more damage. And early on, if it's a lot easier to actually pump damage on bosses, it means I'm going to be much more useful to my group. And so I will become a lot stronger and actually have the opportunity to maybe MVP or actually get like damage titles and perform very well because even missing a single red dragon horn is detrimental <laughs> to the amount of damage you actually pump out on this class. Now, the last little piece of this is how does it feel to play and my thoughts on it so far. Uh, honestly, like I mentioned before, it feels exactly the same as playing uh, Pinnacle because you use pretty much the exact same abilities. Uh, I do feel like it's very fast, which I really, really like that about it. Uh, it. You never really have like times where you're like waiting for skills to come off cooldown and stuff. You are always just pumping buttons. You are always smashing a ton of buttons, which I personally really, really like. And it's the reason why I play Glavier. I like having a lot of buttons to press. You are very, very fast, and I do have to say, something has to be said about maxing out swiftness. It's pretty nice moving at, like, mock speeds at all times. I really, really, really do enjoy that about Control. The only do things I do miss from playing uh, from playing Pinnacle is my parry. I did like the parry a lot, and my Red Dragonhorn. I feel like Red Dragonhorn is a very good-feeling ability. I'm not a fan of any other of the red skills. I don't really like Starfall Pounce. I don't like Thrust of Destruction. I don't like Forehead Strike or Spiraling Spear. None of them feel that good to use, in my opinion. Uh, so losing them wasn't the end of the world for me. And again, I always found that the blue skills felt better to use regardless. They were always a lot smoother. So if you are a Pinnacle Glavier who is dead set on Pinnacle, you don't want to play Control because of XYZ, the reality is that no video has really said this yet, at least not the ones that I've watched, uh, but they are pretty much the same spec. They feel the exact same to play. If you like playing Pinnacle Glavier, you will like playing Control Glavier because you use pretty much all the same skills. When you're playing Pinnacle, you are in blue tree the majority of the time because you have like two abilities that actually damage in your red tree. It is pretty much the exact same. Now, the last thing I want to touch on here is the actual damage numbers. How much of a damage difference is control from Pinnacle right now? So for myself, I do 
a lot more damage and control than I did on Pinnacle when I am attacking the bot and even in boss fights and whatever. The reason for this, obviously, is because my control setup is better built than my Pinnacle setup was because control is super cheap to put together. Uh, I'm running 4-3 engravings. I have more stats. Like, just in general, the only reason I do more damage right now is because it's just well put together. I also did test my damage against a similarly geared Pinnacle Glavier. We went into a Night Fox Yoho, uh, just one-on-one -on -one to see how the damage was. Uh, we did end off on a 60-40 damage split, obviously in the Pinnacle Glavier's favor. One thing I do want to mention on the damage, num damage numbers for control that I've personally uh, gotten is that I don't know how much this has an impact on control, but I am still in full Harsh Oath because I was playing Pinnacle before this. Now, I know when I got, first got my entire uh, Harsh Oath set in Pinnacle, my damage jumped by, like I think, like 100, 150k around, right? That is a massive jump. Now, when I was obviously testing against that uh, other Pinnacle Glavier, he was also in Harsh Oath, so I was not able to get any crit rate off of my total Lunar Eclipse, and I do think that that's an important thing to mention, because again, I don't know how much of an impact Preordained would have on control, however, it was a very noticeable jump in my damage for Pinnacle, so I assume it would do the same for control. Another important thing to mention is that obviously my tripods are not set up. My weapon right here, you can notice, has actually no tripods uh, for control. So this will also have a large impact on the damage that I'm actually doing. Now, the last little bit of copium, obviously, is that Night Fox Yoho is a very easy boss. It's a boss that we've killed a million times. And so that type of practice will affect, obviously, how Control and Pinnacle perform right now. But the reality is that both specs are kind of weak right now. It's just, it is what it is. It sucks to say. <laughs> but the reality is that unless you outgear the people you're with, uh, even if they're not, obviously, comparing to other Glaviers, to like Zerkers, Sorks, Deathblades, Shadowhunters, unless you don't beat them in gems, you don't outgear them in item level, you don't outgear them uh, in some shape or form, whether it's engravings, whatever it is, chances are you're just going to not be doing insane damage on Glavier right now, just because we are a class that benefits heavily from the stats that we get from Relic Tier and from the actual Relic Tier armor and weapons itself. The set bonuses are very, very big for Control and for Pinnacle. I will be putting out a guide soon on how I build and play my Control Glavier. Uh, there will be a bunch of guides coming for like Relic sets, which ones to go for. I will be still putting out Pinnacle content as well, because as I said, I do like both specs and we'll be playing both specs. Uh, and we will be doing, I guess, like comparisons once we actually get to the Relic here, once I actually get Relic Jewelry. Uh, and also an update video on if my entire Grandmaster scheme actually worked out and this was actually all part of the plan and it, it worked out perfectly for me. <laughs> so expect a lot more, I guess, like general Glavier content coming in the future. As as always guys thank you so much for watching today's video if you guys are still here i appreciate you thank you so much for watching till the end if you're new around here be sure to hit the subscribe button i post daily to this channel if you guys enjoy the content make sure to like it be sure to check me out on twitch as i said before if you're watching this right now i'm already live so click the link in the description box down below and lastly i would highly recommend you guys join the community discord it's filled with a bunch of amazing people if you're looking for people to hang out with shout with play some lost ark with you definitely want to be there I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye.